Hey there! What's up, Meeplers? I'm Abby. I'm Eman. We're Matches and Meeples, and welcome back to our channel. And we're here again! Please do give this video a big thumbs up, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel and click that notification bell icon to get updated on more of our future content. Let's start! So for the past few months, we have been too busy with work and events that we haven't been able to schedule our monthly haul for the month of June and July. So today, we'll be doing a joint haul for those two months. Starting with June. So for our first game for the month of June, it's Sleeping Gods! As you can see, this game is very heavy. It was designed and illustrated by Ryan Lockhart, and there are so many components in this box. I heard that this game is really good, so that's why we bought it. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to unbox it yet, so I won't be able to give a review of the game. Some of my friends have already tried playing this game and I've heard great news about it. Sleeping Gods is a 1 to 4 player campaign narrative type of game. It's soloable and it's a medium weight game so I definitely recommend trying or buying it. Next is Stardew Valley. So as you notice, this game has really great art and I really love it. Stardew Valley is a medium weight game for 1 to 4 players where they play cooperatively to be able to achieve Grand Pass goals and build the community bundles as well as defeat the Jojo Corporation in the process. I really love this game because it's worker placement and you get to farm and harvest a lot of things. I love playing it solo as well as playing it with my friends but the difficulty scales up when you're playing with a lot more players. So I think the best player count for this game would be uh, solo and up to two players because it really gets difficult with three and four players. We've tried it. It's fun but it's super hard and difficult to be able to achieve all of those goals. One thing I don't like about this game is that it doesn't hold sleeve cards. So we had to print a 3D insert for this one just to be able to accommodate all of those cards and components. And now it's really heavy. But it's a really great game. I know Gaming Library and Board Game Madness is offering pre-orders for this game. So I do suggest you try and buy it because it's a really great game. So our third game comes from the same publisher of Little Factory. It's Little Town. <laughs> so this one we requested from gaming library we really love little factory because it's a really easy game where you trade products to get other products and vice versa so this game plays differently than little factory it is a two to four player medium lightweight game that you could teach to people easily on conventions and other meetups. Uh, Little Town is a worker placement game wherein you place your workers on the board and collect resources and money to build buildings and a lot more. I really love this type of game because it's really easy to do and it's very strategic. I love a lot of yellow games already. So I definitely recommend this one. Next up on the list is none other than this very cute unicorn card game. Cabo! So just a shout out to Hans and the people at Gaming Library who are some of the people that I know that really love this card game. This one is the Cabo Deluxe Edition. It plays from 2 to 4 players and it's a lightweight game. So the thing about this game is that you have to have the lowest sum of the values of the cards that you have. So the theme is the value of the cards represent the distance from you and Cabo. You have to be the closest one in order for you to win. And that means you have to have the lowest sum. It's cool, right? <laughs> I really love playing this game because you get a card, replace it, and even do a lot of things in order for you to have the lowest number. So this box contains two decks which you can play alternately. You don't have to mix them. They're just two different decks that you could play right after the other one. And that's it. This is Cabo. So next on the list is Herbaceous. So Herbaceous is the game that came out first before Herbaceous Sprouts. 
Herbaceous is a 1 to 4 player lightweight game wherein you pick and pot herbs and place them on glass jars and containers. So you place differently compared to Herbaceous Sprouts wherein you have to roll a die. This one we haven't tried because we haven't unboxed it yet but hopefully we'll be able to play them this month. I love a lot of pencil first games and I do collect most of them because they have great art and most of them are soloable. You could just take a break at work or even start your day with having tea and playing those kind of games. It's really super chill. I love to play them especially in this rainy season. So for 6th and 7th board game haul, we have the Small World Power Pack 1 and Small World Power Pack 2. So these two are expansions of the game Small World. It adds more races and powers to your selection. So there's a lot that you can choose from and it's kind of a mix and match. To give you a brief overview about Small World, it's an area control game wherein you have to occupy most of the spaces on the board to be able to obtain coins and the player with the most coins at the end of the game wins. And just a note, I hate skeletons especially when they're flying. So our next game on the list is none other than Carnegie. So this game is designed by Xavier, Georges, Jorges. Please do let me know what's the correct pronunciation for his name. And of course, illustrated by none other than my favorite artist, Ian O'Toole. Carnegie is a 1-4 to four player medium heavy game. So this is all about Andrew Carnegie and his improvement of the steel industry in the United States. In this game, you have to do a lot of things. When we first tried learning this game, it was a bit hard to understand. But as we play, we understood um, some of the things completely. So it's actually an amazing game. In Carnegie, you have to recruit and manage employees, expand your business, invest in real estate and so much more, and of course, create transport chains across the United States. When you see the map at first, you will be able to see there is north, east, south, and west, so you have a lot of options where to start from. Queen Games really put a lot of effort in this game. You could definitely see that in the components of the game, as well as the thickness of the components, the tokens, and the board. I love the money because it's the first time I've seen those kind of money in a game. And of course, the inserts are very good. Every player has their own storage for the components and the starting money and cubes. The department tiles also has a separate storage and the goods and the money as well. And it definitely holds sleeve cards, which I think is one of the greatest features that a game should have. We love sleeving. As they say, keep calm and sleeve. Up next is one of my favorite games, Rococo. So Rococo is a game from three designers, Matthias, Louis, and Stefan. And as you can see, it's illustrated by my favorite artist, Ian Otsu. <laughs> Rococo is a 1-5 to five player medium weight game wherein you have to collect resources like threads and laces to be able to create your own garment. I super love the art of this game and the colors are just so amazing. I especially love the pink and teal colors of the components. Now, this is actually my second copy of the game. I decided to sell my first copy since it wasn't the version that I was looking for. I think this one is the Deluxe Plus Edition wherein you have the queen miniature rather than just a queen made out of cardboard. In Rococo, you are the owner of a tailoring business wherein you have to dress people so they could attend this lavish ball hosted by King Louis of France. And as it says in the game, it's all about creating a presence at the most prestigious ball of the era and gain everlasting fame and prestige. And I really recommend this game because it's really easy to learn. It just looks a bit complicated because there's a lot of components. But once you play that, you kind of get how everything works. So that's it for Rococo. Okay, so that's a lot of games already. And now we're into our 10th game. It's Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. <laughs> 
So, Dinosaur Island Roar and Ride is a 1 to 4 player medium weight game. Here, you'll have to roll and draft dice to get DNA and other resources, then take actions with it. You can do a lot of things like making dinosaurs, hiring specialists, creating your polyomino dinosaur park, and having people tour it at the end of every round. What's funny is there is what you call a death toll in which a lot of your tourists die, so a disaster ensues. I do like this game, especially the part where you have to draw your park, because I love getting creative with it. So this one, I would definitely recommend. So next on the list is our second tiny epic game in the collection, which is Tiny Epic Dungeons. So this one is a classic dungeon crawler for 1-4 to four players, and it's a medium weight game. When I saw it on Kickstarter, I was really excited about this. I really am a bit interested with dungeon crawlers especially. Although we haven't gotten to unboxing this game yet because we're still waiting for the other expansions and components that we ordered. But we're really excited to play this one and it's cooperative as well. So I do recommend it. And it's a really very portable game because it's super small. You can manage to fit this anywhere in your bags. And that's it for Tiny Epic Dungeons. Now we've come to our 12th game and I'm really excited about this one. This game has been one of my favorite roll and rights, which comes next after Hadrian's Wall. It's Three Sisters. Three Sisters is a 1 to 3 player medium weight game. So in this game, you can do a lot of things like growing and taking care of your crops, like um, pumpkins, corns, beans. You can also harvest fruits and flowers, as well as taking care of your apiary and selling your goods to the market. I do love this game and I have been playing this a lot more recently. So the title Three Sisters actually comes from the indigenous agricultural planting technique called companion planting. So this is where you plant three crops wherein they help each other grow together. So in this game, you draft your dice from the action rondelle and use it on your player sheets to do a lot of actions. You can strategize and do chain combos a lot. So it's a really fun game. I love to play it nowadays because I think it fits this rainy weather that we currently have right now. I, and I really love this game. So if you guys haven't tried it yet, I do recommend you buy this game already. This is such an easy game to learn and I love the roll and write mechanism as well. And next on the list is an out-of-print game. It's Victoriana. Victoriana is a 1 to 4 player medium weight game. You take the role of famous individuals from Victorian history and literature, chasing leads, overcoming nefarious agents, and working together against a sinister mastermind and the clock itself. So I'm not yet that familiar with this game, but I know that it's a detective game and it's Illustrated by my favorite artist, Ian O'Toole. This game is already out of print, but luckily I got a copy of the game. Just a shout out to Anna and JC of Board Game Madness. They were able to help me find a copy of this game. This came from Thailand. So I was really astonished and happy when I found out that they got a copy of this game. And so that's Victoriana for you. So 14th on the list is a game that you guys are familiar already. It's Love Letter. So this is a 2 to 6 lightweight game wherein you have to bluff each other and have the highest card value at the end of the game in order to win. You might think that this game is really easy but bluffing others is a bit tricky. So it's a bit hard <laughs> but we also love to play this in between games. So I do recommend Love Letter. They have a lot of versions, but we decided to just go with this one. They have Star Wars, they have Infinity Gauntlet, and so much more. So you guys should definitely try this out. Next on the list is an expansion for a very famous game. It's A Face for Odin, the Norwegians. So this game is an expansion for A Face for Odin. It adds exploration tiles, new buildings, new goods, and new good box to the selection. We have opened this game already, but we haven't managed to play it with the base game. But I'm really excited to try this one because I know it has a lot of good reviews. So this one is a really recommended expansion. On to our 16th game, which is Tenpenny Parks. 
Ten Penny Parks is a one to four player, medium lightweight game. I really love the artwork because it just screams carnival to you, right? In Ten Penny Parks, you can do a lot of things like building your carnival, using a variety of polyomino tiles, which includes rides, attractions, and concessionaires. You can do actions around the carousel as well as on the other parts of the main board like cutting down trees, getting a loan, and so much more. After every round, you pay for ads which will then help you earn VP points as well. So we haven't been able to unbox our copy yet but we have been able to play our friend's copy. Even if you're in the last place, I do think you can still catch up. That is how the game was made. It's super fun. There's a lot of things you can do and you can even expand your property board. So that's it for 10 Penny Parks. Second to the last is a game called Alma Matter. Alma Matter is a 2 to 4 player medium heavyweight game. It is all about attracting exceptional students, the best teaching staff, and exchange knowledge as well with other competing schools. And so this game we bought at second hand. I really got lucky with this one because we bought it at a super cheap price. And the components are just so pretty and amazing. There are these cute little books and the cardboards are very thick. We haven't really gotten to learning this one yet. But probably before the end of this month, we're able to play this one already. And I'm so excited about it. And that's it for Alma Matter. Okay, now we're at the last one. So this is the first time we'll be able to feature a print and play roll and write game. And it's Voyages. Voyages is played from 1 up to 100 players, just like the game Welcome To. In this game, you are a ship captain. You'll be sailing the seas to do some adventure, exploration, and probably sell some cargoes here and there. I would say that this game is very thematic. You roll three dice every turn and you won't know where you'll end up the next round. We've already played another game of the same publisher. Um, we just backed it. It's called Aquamarine. Um, we'll be telling you more about it probably on our next haul. So yeah, that's it for Voyages. Also, I do want you guys to see my print and play collection which is this one. ta -da! So this clear book has a lot of print and play games. Probably in our next vlog, I'll be able to review and feature some of our print and play roll and write games. And that's it for the monthly haul of June and July. Thank you guys for staying with us up to the end of this video. If you have any comments on what you think we should improve on and suggestions on the content you want to see from us, please do comment them down below. And before we say goodbye, I would just like to give a shout out to my fiance Eman for setting everything up Aww. and making my life easier. Thank you. So thank you for watching and again, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to get updated on more of our future content. Bye! Mm -hmm.